Firebase console tips and tricks. Setting up quotas and billing alerts. Exporting Google Sheet data to Firestore. Awesome tools for prototyping web apps. It's time to get productive on this episode of Hashtag, Hashtag Ask, Ask Firebase. Firebase. Hey everyone, welcome to a brand new episode of Hashtag Ask Firebase. My name is David East and my favorite CSS color is Papaya Whip. Seriously, you should just go try it. You know, background color Papaya Whip. Papaya Whip, that sounds like a really good dessert. Okay. And I'm Sumi Chandel. And you know, when I was a kid, I used to go to the pool fairly often, but I didn't realize I couldn't swim until I was 25. Today, we're gonna to be doing things just a bit differently. Normally, we answer questions that you ask. But today we're covering some of our favorite Firebase productivity tips. So if you like this episode, make sure to like and subscribe because we can always find more productivity tips to talk about. Let's get started. All right, David, what are your favorite Firebase console tips and tricks? So the Firebase console is full of awesome tips and shortcuts to keep you productive. And I'm gonna cover just a few of my favorite ones, starting with Firestore. So one of the cool things about Firestore is, is that you've probably gone and tried to delete a document before. And to do that, you click this little delete button and you get prompted to delete. But you can skip that by just hitting shift click and you can just rapidly delete everything and have no regard to that delete prompt. But if you want to delete the whole document, you do need a delete prompt for that one. You can also do the same shift delete with the real-time database. So in the real-time database console, if I try to delete something, it's going to prompt me. So instead of doing that, I'm just going to hold down shift and click and it's gone. And another fun tip is, is that I don't have to just pass in a string. I can also pass in JSON into the values. And so after I put in this JSON object and hit enter, it formats it out to me as a full object. And that is a really awesome time saver. Another time saver is the one-click rollbacks in version management with Firebase hosting. So here in the hosting console, I have two versions, a current version and a previously deployed version. So let's say something went wrong on my current. So if I wanna go back, I can just go to the previously deployed version and click rollback. And then automatically we see that we are deployed to the rollback version. And if I wanna go back to the other one, I can just roll back to that one as well. And all those versions get maintained in the console. Another thing I can do is keep track of how many versions I want Firebase hosting to store. So I can say, just only keep one version at a time, maybe 10 or even 100 versions. And you can see that Firebase hosting tells us how much storage that's gonna take up. So I'll just select five. And then from now on, I will just have the last five versions of my site saved. This last tip is all about saving time, debugging your problems and monitoring the health of your cloud functions. So here in the function console, I can take a look at the usage. So how many invocations by day? And so I get a good feel for what's going on for uh, you know, overall usage. But I also can go into logs. And what logs is going to do, it's going to show me successful function invocations, but also some errors. So I can see I have a type error here, and it even gives me the call stack. But if I go to health, I can start seeing what are the trend of these errors over time. So 22, 16, 24, 20. So day by day, I can see when these errors were occurring. And I can see the call stack in here, and I can even see when it was first seen and when it was last seen to see if how long lasting this bug has been. And to get even more insight, I can get performance of this function, and it will tell me things like how many invocations a second. And so I can see that across the span of uh, this whole day. And then I can see really important things like latency. And so how long did it take for this function to run? And then also what memory pressure was happening. And then also outbound networking. So is it taking up a lot of data? How, how much is it consuming? Using all that information from the Cloud Functions console, I can find bugs, I can see if there's any performance problems and track those down really easily. And that was just a few tips and there are many, many more in the console. So if you're curious about a specific product, just leave us a comment and we'll cover it. You took my computer. Yeah, well, I needed it to answer the next, next question. question. So this next productivity tip is for you, Sumit. Hmm. How do I monitor and manage costs with the Blaze plan? Very good question. The Blaze plan is a pay-as-you-go plan. 
If you're using a product like Cloud Firestore, you still get the benefit of the free tier, but once you go over, you start to pay for your usage. For the most part, you're probably wanting to see more usage because that can translate to more users, traffic, and all that awesome stuff. However, sometimes usage can mean that you've made a mistake or you may not be interested in paying more than a certain amount. In those cases, you have two types of tools at your disposal. The first tool is billing alerts. Billing alerts are set up in the Google Cloud Console. Let's check it out. This is the billing section in the Google Cloud Console. Here we can see our cost trend. And on the left-hand side, we'll go to budget and alerts and create a new budget. So we'll set a name for the budget. We'll select the project that this budget applies to, and then whatever products that we want this budget to apply to as well. That can be both Firebase products or cloud products, whichever ones that your project is using. Next, we'll go and set a specified amount for our budget. That can be any value that is important to you. Here we could set something like 20 or $50. So we'll go ahead and set that. We can also decide if we want to include credits in our cost. And now we can set what thresholds at which we want to be alerted for when we're reaching close to our budget. So we can set the actual amount or the forecasted amount. So you can set any combination you'd like uh, for different percentages and whether that's the actual or forecasted uh, spend for your account. And after you set those up, you'll be alerted whenever you've reached those thresholds. Now, one important thing to know about budgets is that they won't actually limit your usage. They'll just send you alerts when you're close to reaching the budget. However, there is another way to control cost through quotas. Now, only certain products like Firestore allow for quota limits, but it's a really good way to make sure you don't spend more than you need to. I'd cover that in depth, but Todd Kerbelman did a fantastic job in his Get to Know Cloud Firestore series. Check that video out for more details, and the link is in the description. I need my laptop back. I need it. I need it for the next, next question. question. Is there a way to export data from Google Sheet to Firestore? So this is one of my favorite productivity tips. Google Apps has a tool called AppScript, and that lets you write JavaScript snippets that uh, automate tedious tasks and does like way more. And we can use AppScript to get the contents of a spreadsheet and export it out to a Firestore database. So right here, I have this spreadsheet. And the first row is you know a bunch of properties, and then below is the data. And so I can open up the Google AppScript editor to write some code to send this data over to Firestore. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a menu item and have it you know, click on a button to say export to Firestore. So I'll create a function called onOpen, which is a magic app script function, and call a spreadsheet app object, get the UI, create a menu, and I'll give it a, you know, a top level name of Firebase. Then I'll add an item, and this right here is my export to Firestore item. And that will call a function, which we place as a string. And then we add it to the UI. So now we'll create this function called main. And we're going to do a couple things. We're going to get the active spreadsheet. And we're also going to get its name, because its name is going to match up for the collection in Firestore. So we'll create a sheet variable called spreadsheet app dot get active sheet. And then from there, we can get the sheet name by just calling sheet dot get name. So now what I need to do is I need to get the uh, first row because those are the object properties. So things like the author, the ISBN, you know, the category, and the title. And then I want to get the next 100 rows because those are the records, and that's going to be whatever the author's name is. So you know, Alice author, ISBNs. I don't know what those even look like, and category, and the title of the book. And this comes back as a two-dimensional array. And then from there, we'll take that data and send it out to Firestore. So to get the first row of properties, I'm going to do that as a function called getProperties. That'll take in a sheet as a parameter. And then we'll call sheet.getRange. We'll start at the first row, the first column. We only need to get the first row. And then we'll go over four columns. Then we're going to call get values, which actually returns it as a two-dimensional array. So the inner array is author, ISBN, category, and title. And so I'm going to just grab that zeroth index 
inside of the array, so it only comes back as one array and not two-dimensional. So I'll grab these properties in the main method by passing in the sheet. And then now I need to get the next 100 rows. So I'll create a method called get records, which also takes in the sheet. And then I'll return sheet.getRange. We'll start at the second row, and then the first column, go 100 rows, and then across four columns, and call get values. And this right here returns as a 2D array, but that is what we want. So we'll get these records by calling get records and passing in the sheet. And then now we just need to export to Firestore. So I'm going to get a Firestore app dot get Firestore, and this needs to take in a service account. So this library right here is called uh, Google App Script uh, Firestore, and uh, we paste in this ID, and so that's how we get it added in. And then from here, we need to configure it with a service account. So I'm just going to blank these out for now because I don't want you stealing my service account. But to get a service account, I go to the console, I'll download the key, and then I just go through and I find those properties, and then I would just paste them in right here. But I'm going to do that behind the scenes. So now I'll create my method export to Firestore, and that's going to take in the Firestore instance, the collection name, the properties from the first row, and then all of the records. So I'm going to map over all the records and convert them from an array into an object. Because we first get a record that's just an array of values, and then we also have the properties, which is the actual uh, object properties themselves. So I'll create an empty object called data. And what I really want to do is say data of author is the first index in the record. So I can loop through the properties. And then from here, I can take the data object and put in the property name, and then use the uh, index in the for each method to grab that value from the record. So I'll return that data, and it's gone from an array of values to an object of values. So for each one of these, I can just call firestore.createDocument, pass in the collection name, and then put the data as the value. So now all I have to do is just call that method in the main with all the proper arguments. And when on open calls, it's going to call our main method. When we click Add to Firestore, we'll grab the properties, grab the records, grab the Firestore, and then I will export it out to Firestore. All right, so we have this great Firebase button. We click it, and we can see that all of our data is in the database. And this will work every time I just go and click that button. This is really helpful if your team manages data in a spreadsheet, and you commonly need to get that data into Firestore. And uh, the use cases for App Script and Firestore really are endless. Uh, you can do the inverse, and you can take data from Firestore, and you can put it into a spreadsheet where you can safely slice and dice your data, not in a production environment. So App Script and Firestore, there's a lot of amazing things you can do. So that's all the productivity tips we have for you in this episode. If you have a specific product that you'd like to know more about, or if you have your own productivity tips to share with us, let us know. So make sure to like and subscribe because we're going to be doing more of these kinds of videos. And we will see you in the very next episode of Hashtag Ask Firebase.